Matilda can be run in Kubernetes, and it can also be run in the cloud. In this particular example, we're going to use Kubernetes in Google Cloud, although you could certainly run it in any Kubernetes. To start with, we're going to assume that we have our Google Cloud set up. So we have a project, and we know what the project name is. I just set up a, a free project here inside of Google Cloud using their free tier credits. You also need to have a VPC created. You can use the default one, and certainly most people will. I built a custom VPC because I wanted to limit the number of regions to just the free region, but Google will set it up by default for you if you want. I also created custom subnets. Again, you can accept the default subnet. Uh, the only reason I created the custom ones is I wanted them to be in the US Central One region, which I know for sure is one of the regions that qualifies for the free tier services. But again, most of the time when I see projects set up, typically folks just take the default settings, the default VPC, the default subnets, and if that's the case, that's fine. We're going to be using the images that are from Docker Hub, and we'll see those referred to later. They come from this project here at on Docker Hub, the Weaponized Matilda project, which has the five different servers laid out inside of there. I've also made some notes of the different commands that we're going to run. And these notes will vary a little bit for you, depending on which region you picked and what the name of your project is and what you called your VPC and your subnets. But these will give you the general idea. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to create some virtual machines inside of the cloud for Kubernetes to run the application on. And we're just going to accept the default of three nodes or three virtual machines. I'm deliberately choosing the machine type of G1 small because it qualifies for the free services, at least at the time of this video anyway. Some of the things that I need to know are the location that I want to run the nodes in. I picked US Central 1A. We need to know the name of our project. And we also need to know the name of our network. So the network that I created, I gave it the name of Matilda VPC1. And my subnet I called the Matilda Kubernetes subnet one. But you'll notice that I've put the full path here to those. So obviously yours are going to be different. So you'll need to figure out what the full path is for your network and subnetwork. And you can get that by going over here to your VPC networks. And when you click on the actual network, it's going to give you the full path once it loads. So you'll be able to find that this is the name of the network here. And then these are the names of the subnets. But the full path is going to be the project name to start. So you'll know what your project name is. And then it's going to be the region that your network is in. And then it'll be the name of the network. So the network here is projects and then the name of my project. Then I have global networks and the name of my network, which is Matilda VPC1. Then my subnetwork is projects, the name of my project, regions, the name of my region, subnetworks, and the name of my subnetwork. So you can kind of see it's like a REST style URL is what they're using. And if you need any of that information because um, you forgot anything of what I just said, you'll see it's displayed on the screen here. Here's the name of the subnet. Here's the region that the subnets are in. And the name of the project is up here in the URL. So all that information is available right here inside of Google Cloud if you happen to need to go back and get any of that information. So now we know the name of our network and subnetworks, and we know what node location our virtual machines are going to be created in. We have to pick a name for the cluster. I'm going to call it Matilda Day Cluster 1. You can call it whatever you like. And the rest of this is just, uh, it's just a command that you type in. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this. Now, to run this command, you will need G Cloud set up. But 
uh, if you are going to be using Google Cloud, you're going to have G Cloud already set up for that reason. So we'll paste the command in here. So it's going to be G Cloud container clusters create because we want to create a cluster. It's going to be called Matilda Cluster 1. The nodes are going to be in US Central 1A for me. Then I have the name of my network, the name of my subnetwork. I'm going to say release channel regular, which is the Kubernetes release channel. Regular is fine. I'm going to use machine type G1 small, which are pretty modest machines, but they again, they fall into the free tier. For the image type, I'm going to select the cause container D, which is going to be default at some point. So someday we won't have to type that anymore. And then these are the add-ons that I picked, and these are totally up to you if you want to enable these or not. So when we hit enter, this command is going to take quite a while, um, probably up to five minutes to create this cluster. So just hang in there and let it run. Once the setup is complete, you'll see that the console displays the name of the cluster, and it's going to give you the region, the version of Google Kubernetes engine, the IP address, the internal IP address, and also a the machine type in there. And the machine type, or excuse me, the IP address is what you would use if you were trying to open up firewall rules to connect to it from your house or whatever. But typically, there's there's no need for that because you control everything through kube control. And you don't really need to connect directly to Kubernetes nodes in most cases. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to populate the Kubernetes file with the credentials. And that way, we will be able to switch from using the G Cloud program, and we'll be able to connect using the kube control program. But to do that, we have to have credentials to use kube control in this command here is going to set that up for us. So this should just take a moment to run it. Now we're going to start creating the individual containers one by one. There's going to be five total. So the first one's going to be the database. And to get this set up, we need to have the kube control create what's called a deployment. Formerly, this was called a pod, but now deployments are best practice. We got to give the deployment a name. The name here is Matilda hyphen database. And we also need to specify the image that we're going to use. And we said earlier that we're going to pull these images from Docker Hub. This is the address to the database image that we saw on Docker Hub. So we'll run this command. Let's go back over to Google and we'll take a look. So we'll go over to the Kubernetes engine and look at the workloads and wait for our temporary project to load. And then we'll see that this particular container has been created. We can't do much with it yet, but at least it's up there and ready to go. We'll have to create a path to it in order to actually start using it. And right now you can see that there's no path. There's there's no services that are exposing this container right now. So the next line that we're going to run is going to be to create a service that exposes that deployment so that we can use it. And the database doesn't need to be accessed from the internet. We just need to connect it over to the web server. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a deployment expo uh, service that is of type cluster IP, meaning that it'll have an IP that can be connected to by anyone in the cluster, but there's no reason to put the database out on the web, for example. We're going to use port 3306 because that is the port that our container is running on. Makes sense because it's a MySQL service. And we're just going to keep that same port number for both 
the external facing port and the port used by the service itself internally. So this Kube control line here will get the job done. And now there's going to be a service that can be used to connect to the database. We'll go back over here and we'll refresh. And then if we go down to where the services are, we'll see that indeed the container now has an IP address that would allow another service to connect to it. It's an internal IP, and that's fine because we're not going to expose it externally. So these next four pairs do the exact same thing, but this one's going to set up the LDAP service again as a cluster IP because it's a backend service, port 389, which is what the LDAP server runs on. We're going to give it the name Matilda LDAP. And we're also going to give it a internal name of directory. So whenever the web server tries to connect to the name directory, Google will automatically resolve the name directory into the IP. Like up here, the name was database. If we were to use the DNS service inside of Kubernetes and resolve the name database, it's going to resolve to 10.131.252.155 because that's the IP address that that particular service happened to get. Now the next three are similar, but there's going to be a slight difference in the service. So service number three is going to be the web. And that's going to be the web deployment, and its name is Matilda hyphen www. And down here, we gave it a DNS name of www. But look at the type. The type of service is actually a load balancer. That allows us to expose the service externally to the web instead of just being available inside of Kubernetes. We're going to use port 80. And then for the database admin website, which is PHP My Admin, it's going to use port 82, but it's going to be on a different load balancer, so it'll have a different IP. And there won't be any collision because this port 80 here will be on the IP for the Matilda website, and this port 80 here is going to be on the IP for the PHP MySQL admin website. And this is all going to be set up automatically for us. And finally, we're going to have the LDAP admin, which is PHP LDAP admin website. It's going to have an internal name of LDAP admin for the web server to connect to. And it's going to have a service type of load balancer again, because we want to put it out on the web. So we want it to be exposed externally. The main thing to notice here is the difference between a cluster IP service and a load balancer service. And also note that when these containers are running in Kubernetes, you cannot get to them by default. You need to create a service that gives you a way to connect to them. That's why there's always pairs of these commands that are being run. So let's just go ahead and run the next set of them back to back. They'll run pretty quick. Once they're done, we'll go back over here. We'll go back up to the main screen of our deployments and we'll refresh. And what we'll see is, is that over time, pretty quickly, these different services are gonna get IPs as they become available and the services will be deployed and the DNS will be set up. And it's all happening inside of Kubernetes, in this case, Google Kubernetes engine automatically. So over time, as you refresh, you'll see that more and more of the services come online, and then eventually they'll all be available. Now, you don't have to actually use the website. You can monitor this using Kube Control Get Services, and it'll give us the same information, but it allows to do it over here in the console. And You'll notice that the cluster IPs are not going to get an external IP, so they'll just have none. But the other services are going to get the load balancer services. They're going to get external IPs once they become available. So the web already has its IP available here. We can go ahead and use that one. 
and we'll have to wait for the other two to come online. But in the meantime, browse out to the website and it says that the database, not surprisingly, is offline because we haven't created it yet. And Matilda has this page that will give you some information about the backend services. You'll notice that it's looking for the database host named database. Naturally, that's exactly the name that we gave ours in the Kubernetes configuration for that reason. And that way, it'll be able to resolve the host name that Google picked, which is this one here. And then similarly for the LDAP, recall that we called our service directory. And of course, we did that on purpose because Matilda is looking for the service whose name is directory, and that'll allow it to resolve the Kubernetes IP as well. Let's go ahead and click on set up the database here. Get that knocked out. And then once it's all built, we can go back to the home page there. And let's go back and check on the status of our other services. So we've now got our database admin service has an external IP. We can start to use that one. Copy that and go open up a new tab. Paste that in there. And that'll bring up the my PHP my admin. And then we'll grab the IP for the LDAP admin and open up a tab for that one. And then we'll be able to log into this one. And the username and password were on that, that same database offline page that we saw earlier. So if you can't remember what they were, you can always go back and look. And then you can just copy it. And you paste that. If you recall, the password was Matilda. So we hit authenticate. And then that'll get us logged in. And you'll notice that the LDAP server doesn't have any data in it by default, but it's easy to import. So you click on the import button here. And then we'll go back over to Matilda. We'll go back to the home page. And we'll click on the Tilda LDIF file here on the front screen. We're just going to open it with a text editor. It's just plain text. And then we'll go back to our PHP LDAP admin. We'll paste that text. We're going to click don't stop on errors because we already got some of the objects created and some aren't. So there's a mixture. All right, and increase the ones it needs to and populates the LDAP directory for us as well. So now we have Matilda Day all set up inside of our Google's Kubernetes engine with services appropriately assigned to either expose the backend services within the Kubernetes environment or with those three front-end services that lets us get to the Matilda Day web page, the PHP My Admin page, and the PHP LDAP admin page as we need to.